There we go, 178 Tunneling Company, Royal Engineers. And they did, they actually dug 45 miles of top secret military tunnels inside the Rock of Gibraltar, which is only three miles long. Ourselves, Gibraltar, gentlemen, the gateway. Whether we like it or not, we're the gateway to the Mediterranean. Mm. Gibraltar. Now, if you look up at the Rock of Gibraltar itself, you'll see all these windows, look, on, on, on the sides of the rock there. And they've been digging. They've been digging tunnels and sticking cannons out since the late 1700s. They've been at it, blasting and dynamiting and shoveling and taking rubble away. And they discovered very quickly that if you tunnel downhill, it's harder than tunneling on the level and tunneling uphill. And, you know, just using uh, dynamite and uh, gunpowder and that sort of thing. You know, there's clouds and clouds of smoke and you can't breathe. So they had to push out some ventilation shafts and they suddenly realized hey we can put guns here look we can have a gun sticking out everywhere like a porcupine sticking out of the rock and they managed to f fight off lots of uh, attacks with these cannons that uh, were sitting in the windows there in the little galleries but the big the big threat came of course in the second world war when they brought in various mining companies uh, of engineers and they dug 45 miles of tunnels inside the Rock of Gibraltar to defend it against the Germans. And this involved uh, updating the, the galleries that are already there, dating back to 1700s, and building more. So they had to remove the cannons, brick up the hole, and fit them with machine guns or other artillery. And uh, lots of accommodation as well. Lots of accommodation wings were dug for people. 5,000 servicemen altogether on the Rock during the Second World War. And the main reason that the British are here and they wanted to hang on to it that badly is because of its strategic location. It's literally 14 miles from Africa. Got massive guns up there that can uh, shoot right across. It can actually hit Africa from Gibraltar. And so no Navy could get in or out of the Mediterranean without coming past Gibraltar and getting shelled heavily. Plus, the Mediterranean fleet was parked at Gibraltar as well. And the British were not stupid. They knew that the Germans would come at some point and take Gibraltar. They'd have to if they wanted to cut off the British in North Africa, in Malta and uh, Egypt, Cairo. To resupply Cairo, they'd have to send ships all the way around the bottom of Africa, South Africa, and back up the other side. So it was massively, massively important to keep hold of Gibraltar. So they did. They dug 45 miles a tunnel. They shipped in 5,000 servicemen in the Second World War, and they shipped out the civilian population. They got rid of them all, they evacuated them all to various places around the globe. Now it's fair to say that they were preparing Gibraltar for a siege, so they had to stock up on food, ammunition, water, you name it. And uh, that's one of the big problems with Gibraltar is it didn't have a sufficient water supply. They had to ship water into Gibraltar. Water was rationed. I think everyone was getting like half a pint a day or something ridiculous. Uh, but the ha Gibraltar has no water supply, no natural water. Well, it has a very small natural water supply, but certainly not big enough to support 5,000 people. And it wasn't until the 90s when they built the saltwater desalination plants that they could provide the population with uh, fresh drinking water. And the Germans knew it too. The Germans were not stupid. You can accuse Germans of a lot of things, but being stupid is not one of them. And there was a Ger German general called Alfred Jogel, I think that was his name, Jodl. And uh, he said to Hitler, look, we've got to take Gibraltar. We've got to take it. If we do that, we've cut the British off. And it's only a matter of time before we can push on to take Cairo as well. And then we will dominate everything in Southern Europe. The whole Mediterranean has... Winston Churchill called it the soft underbelly of the crocodile. We'll be under German control and there's not a damn thing the British can do about it. But it really, really hinges upon being able to take Gibraltar. Now the Italians were on the German side. The Italians had a navy and the Italian navy could not get out of the Mediterranean because they'd have to come past Gibraltar. The German navy, on the other hand, couldn't get into the Mediterranean because they'd have to come past Gibraltar. So plans were made, plans were afoot to uh, take Gibraltar. But the one problem 
was, not so much as taking Gibraltar log logistically, but it would heavily rely on the cooperation of Spain and the Spanish. And don't forget, Spain under General Franco was neutral. So Hitler did actually have a meeting with General Franco because he required help from General Franco and he wanted Franco to join the war on the, on the German side. And this never happened because Franco wasn't convinced that the Germans were going to win and uh, they hated each other. Franco and Hitler did not get on at all. That wouldn't have been too much of a problem. I mean, Hitler didn't really care. He could have gone through Spain anyway and launched the attack on uh, Gibraltar. I don't really think that the Spanish could have stopped him uh, at the time. But he seemed to want to put everything in, in order for some reason. He wanted to do it legitimately. Um, but then he had a lot of other things on his plate at the time. And he said to his generals, well, look, we'll, we'll, we'll deal with Gibraltar when we get back from Moscow. And as we all know, that went badly. Um, and so they never got round to attacking Gibraltar, but that didn't mean that the plans were not afoot. Spies were down here. They were spying on the place. They were making notes, making sketches, coming up with plans of how they were going to bomb it, where they were going to attack it. And it would have been a very, very difficult nut to crack because it was armed to the teeth. It really was. And uh, it would have taken a tremendous amount, a, a huge battle, in fact, to crack that nut. As I mentioned earlier, the British were, were supplied for five years. They had five years in mind for a siege. Plus, they had uh, explosives in the tunnels. They uh, were going to detonate the tunnels, demolish the tunnels if the Germans were attacking the place. It would have been an absolute chaotic mess. It would have been a tremendous, probably would have been one of the biggest battles of the war had it actually taken place. But it never took place. It didn't happen. And while you're digging out 45 miles of tunnels, that creates a lot of rubble that's dug out. And uh, it was a full-time job for some soldiers just driving tipper trucks and they're getting rid of the rubble. And they actually used the rubble to build the whole runway. It was dumped into the sea around Gibraltar and uh, later it all become reclaimed land. The sea used to come right up to the old city walls, but nowadays it's half a mile to the city walls of uh, buildings and skyscrapers all from reclaimed land. A lot of it was rubble from these tunnels. Not all of it, obviously. Now it is possible to go in the, uh, the tunnels. Various sections are open. They are constantly uh, revamping and fixing places up and allowing people to go in. We, we used to just go in some of the old places that were deserted and go in with a torch and you're wading round in mud. A lot of them are flooded or dangerous, but uh, a lot of them are actually open and you can go exploring with a, with a guide and be shown around. And it is literally a labyrinth. The military still use some of the tunnels, but most of them are deserted from World War II. But uh, obviously for military purposes, from the Navy base, there are still communications and things inside the rock. In fact, uh, what was he called? Eisenhower, General Eisenhower was in charge of Operation Torch, the invasion of North Africa, and he had his headquarters here in a tunnel in, uh, down by the Navy base during World War II because he was in charge of uh, Allied forces at that time. A lot of the reservoirs as well are dug out inside the rock, you know, your huge caves that are literally dedicated to being filled with uh, fresh water for storage for the siege conditions and they even evacu they even started to dig out hospitals entire hospitals hospital wings you know because they expected a big battle they knew there'd be a lot of casualties and so they had to prepare for it and you can actually go down the uh, lower st michael's cave tour and you can see where they actually prepared the the operating theater and a pit for dead people and all kinds of things that were they were, they were really were planning ahead with everything on this operation. Now you do come across a lot of blast walls because you know if, if it's a huge explosion created inside a tunnel you will be blown out at the other end like a cork, like a cannonball. So they have to have blast walls to stop the blast from 
going down tunnels and there's all kinds of twists and turns and genius ways of uh, deflecting the blast from and stopping it and preventing it from having the barrel effect on everyone that's in it. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you enjoyed watching this video.